You have just clicked on a clip from the Bucket Hat Sam Talks Ball podcast. If you want to listen to the full episode, click the link in the description down below. Like, comment and subscribe. And yeah, enjoy the video. We, we, I think it's we're 14 games in, in the championship, I think. Yeah. Um, at the, currently, at the moment, it is uh, Bournemouth top of the league unbeaten, Fulham second, and the mighty, probably the biggest team in the world, in third, West Brom. I wanted to know who are, who are your picks then to uh, win the championship and who are going to get promoted? We'll start off with the top two. So who are you saying is winning the league and getting that um, automatic promotion? I think Bournemouth are going to stick it out and win the league. Purely because looking at the table now, they've played 14 games and conceded only eight goals and scored 24. It's insane, so, isn't it? Yeah, so they've got good defence and they're firing all, on all cylinders up front and they haven't lost the game yet, winning 10 and only drawn four. So I think they will stick it out. I think they were always too good for the championship. I know they had a bit of a rocky season last year and didn't really do as well as people thought they would. Yeah, but I think with Scott Parker as manager... And Gary Cahill at the back with Lloyd Kelly, that I think we talked about off air um, last night or something. Yeah, we spoke um, about Lloyd Kelly, yeah. Yeah, they've got a really good thing going defensively. And obviously, Scott Park is probably the most enthusiastic manager I've ever seen in my life. So, you know, you know my opinions on Scott yeah. Parker. He just annoys me. He looks me. too good. He looks he's too, too good looking. looking. <laughs> uh, he's just, he just dresses. He's just so suave on the side. But yeah, I definitely want to touch on that Lloyd Kelly point that you made there. Last year, he was playing with Chris Meppham. There we go. Oh, I don't know why I nearly struggled with Meppham. <laughs> Jeez, what is going on? I'm losing it. But the two of them last season were a bit iffy. But Lloyd yeah. Kelly has converted left back and he's gone into a centre back. He's not the tallest, but. What he's got next to him, Gary Cahill, is somebody who's going to literally constantly be in, in his ear. And we're seeing this yeah. little player that Lloyd Kelly could have been. He's 24 years old. He was tipped to be the next best thing. I think, I'm yeah. pretty sure Bournemouth spent around 8 to 12 million on him at the time for a left back in the championship. That's a oh, lot yeah. of money. And he never really he hit the heights. Bristol City. Yeah, never really hit the heights that we all expected. But I do agree with you. I think it pains me to say it. And I'm saying it through grit my teeth. I yeah. do think, but I agree with you. I think, well, do you know what? We'll agree on that. Bournemouth will win the league. I think yes. I think it is early, very early to call. And we'll probably get this m- massively wrong now we've said it and we've both agreed on something. But I agree with you. Bournemouth then are going to win the league. Who do you think are going to get the automatics then? Ooh. Well, so it's obviously between Fulham and West Brom. And I'm probably going to be kicked off the show. But uh, I'm going to say Fulham. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good episode, mate. I will speak to you next week. <laughs> oh. Go on then, yeah, tell I me think... why. Go on, just rub it in my face. Well, they have Mitrovic up front, who in the championship, I think in 64 games, has scored 50 goals. He's a cheat code. He's a cheat figures. code. Yeah, it's insane. Um, and they seem to have tightened up at the back a bit with like they've got a bit of a stronger midfield and their defence like they always go up to the Prem and kind of forget how to defend but in the Championship they look okay I know obviously they got thrashed by Coventry a couple of weeks ago yeah but I watched that was a the, bizarre game that was yeah I watched them against I watched them play QPR at home and they ran QPR off the park like it was fairly even until about the 70th minute and QPR made a change and they they did fall apart but Fulham like counted on it and ended up winning four one from like yeah. one all and then they're four one up in about fifteen minutes. Yeah, I have to admit that the forward players they've got when you do, as you mentioned, so they've got Mitrovic, Bobby D. Bo- oh my word, Bobby D. Bobby, Bobby D. <laughs> I was like, who's that? <laughs> Harry Wilson, Cabano. Yeah. Then you've got Josh Onoma. You've got Kearney, yeah. who was back, I think, last week. Um, Aero. The, the, yeah, it, it, their their squad is packed. It is unreal. It's not fair. Like, <laughs> it is not fair. And it, it hurts. It does hurt looking at that team. My only problem is, I think, with Fulham, this is just my opinion back to you now, because I, th- I can see what you're saying about Fulham. I'm still not convinced by Marco Silva. I've said it yeah. for a few years. This is one of the things I always say when I'm in the pub with my mates and we discuss this. I still don't understand how Marco Silva keeps getting these jobs. He hasn't actually ever done anything consistent across a full season. When he was at Watford, he had moments where they looked unreal and then they'd fall off. Everton, it was inconsistent every week. Yep. Fulham, when you look at that, that squad, I know they're sat in second, 
and you can't really moan at what they're doing. But I'd still say that they should be winning more. They've lost three games. When you look at Bournemouth above them, unbeaten, West Brom have lost two. You wouldn't have said before that that Fulham would be the, the side that would lose the most out of them three. I know it's only one more and I might be looking at it too deeply, but I, I genuinely still don't think he is the right man to take a team somewhere. It's very attacking and he, he seems to be all at attack and you can see it with the starting 11s that he plays. And I don't think he respects other sides. And I think that was what happened against Coventry. It was, we have got the better squad. We'll play our attacking style of play and we will beat you. Mm-hmm. And they do occasionally get picked off. Hasn't happened enough this season, but I think across the course of the season, I believe with that and the fact that I know this is never really a massive problem, and this might sound ridiculous, but I don't know if his squad is too packed to yeah. keep as the, the amount of players that he's got in that squad who are big egos, Premier League players there, like, yeah, to keep the all of them happy every week in, week out. There's, there's no, there's going to be no fluidity. Like it's constant chopping and changing, not knowing who's starting. I think across a season could potentially hinder them. It may come into come in handy across January when you, the game's coming in thick and fast.